Hi, this is Bob Brown. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, today is Wednesday. Uh, it's the 30th of November 2016. Sorry, I had a senior moment there. I have a lot of senior moments. Um, so, on the Standing Rock uh, situation between the two sides, from the Dakota Ac Access Pipeline and uh, people and the the Standing Rock Sioux, the Standing uh, the the environmentalists, everything else. There's been some comments that I've got um, on um, the conflict. Some people say the point is conflict. Well, I, I want to go to this is a very good book. It's called The Fundamental Wisdom of the Middle Way. Nagarjuna's, uh, I won't try to pronounce the Sanskrit here right now, translating commentary by J.L. Garfield. This is a Tibetan Buddhist um, book. And this, this lies at the heart of a lot of the success of Japan and the Toyota production system, more than people know. And I want to do a, a, a business class on the Tibetan saint Shantideva, Nagarjuna and the fundamental wisdom of the middle way. What does all this have to do with the Standing Rock Pipeline? It has a lot. And in Shantideva's terms, or Nagarjuna's terms, or the middle way, uh, the search is for the flaws within people. So in what can happen is that in, in, in the inner dialogue of looking through yourself, we all have flaws. Human beings have myriad of flaws. I'm, I'm the most flawed person in the world. So by finding flaws within yourself, instead of looking upon them as something intrinsically to, to not accept, the concept from Shantideva and the Tibetans and the, middle, the fundamental wisdom of the middle way of the Mahayana Buddhists is that this is a precious jewel. You found the flaw. You found the flaw, one of the flaws within yourself. And that's great because now you can correct it. Just like no one wants to hear that they have cancer, but if you catch cancer early enough, it can be, hopefully with science, it can be eradicated. The problem is to ignore it, let it get to metastasize to the body, and it ultimately will kill you. And all human beings can, I think we all, is cancer, which can affect any, every human being on the planet, we understand that. So this is the concept behind the Toyota production system as well, and Deming's concept of total quality management. It's not to run from conflict, it's not to run from flaws, it's not to run from problems, it's quite the opposite. It's, to, it's not necessarily to seek them out, but when you encounter them, it's not to shirk from it, say, ah, we have found a precious jewel. And I know how that sounds, but you have. You found a flaw in the process. And once you've found a flaw in the process, you can correct it. So it is a precious jewel. This is a problem we didn't know about, and this is what we like to say in Indiana. This is a hitch in the get-along. And this hitch in the get-along is what's causing problems. But now that we have identified it, we can solve it. And in Peter Singe's terms, or what I call Singian terms, we, the system will now smooth out more. It won't, I'm not saying everything will be perfect now, but it's a little better. And that's what it's all about. It's about continuous improvement. That's the Deming total quality management concept. Continuous improvement. This is all Buddhism. This is basic Buddhism. What people in business talk about lean manufacturing, the Toyota production system, it's all Buddhism. It's, it's Christianity too. It's, it's an esoteric way of thinking of the world that we have to solve our problems. So what does this have to do with the, toy, the, the Dakota Access Pipeline, the Standing, Standing Rock, North Dakota, the Standing Rock Sioux, and everybody. That's all the conflict. Conflict is not wrong. Violent, violence towards conflict is wrong. But everything, there's going to be... So what we found here is we found the precious jewel in the Dakota Access Pipeline because we can all agree on one thing. We agree that, we dis that there are two sides that disagree about this. That's good. That's good. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. We now have identified a point of contention. And now we have to reason our way through it. Now, reasoning our way through it doesn't mean become violent. It, it means that we have to sit down and have discussions on how we can move forward. And the discussions are going to be, bring up the terrible word of compromise. 
the C word, compromise. Compromise is the way humanity survives. We survive through compromise. Some people said, we've compromised enough. We are not going to compromise one more time. I know it's bad. It's tough to compromise. It's tough to find the middle way. It's tough to find the fundamental wisdom of the middle way, the middle path, the greater vehicle. It's tough, but it's the only way humanity really will survive. So for both sides that are, that are listening to this, the Dakota Access Pipeline people and the Standing Rock Sioux and the millennial um, environmental people, you should both sides have a Socratic circle. And in that circle, people have to have, you have to take both sides. In other words, you have a team, Team A, you're going to take the Dakota Access Pipeline side, and Team B, you're going to take the Standing Rock side, if you're here. And on the activist side, you're going to have to do the opposite. So you have to take the other side. You have to see how the other person is perceiving this. And then you have a dialogue. I didn't say an argument. I didn't say a confrontation. I didn't say anger. I didn't say violence. I said you have to have a discussion and put forth logical arguments on why both sides. And then from that synthesis, you can gain a greater understanding. Around the outside of the Socratic circle, you have observers. And then the observers do not say anything during the discussion. And keep this limited to maybe five minutes. After the inner circle has finished their discussion, the outer circle critiques them. And then you derive a synthesis from this, put it on a whiteboard, put it on the, and figure, you know, put your ideas and figure out your synthesis to move forward. At the end of the day, there's going to have to be a compromise. At the end of the day, there's going to have to be a synthesis between these ideas. I put them up on my YouTube channel. You're, there has to be a synthesis here. There has to be a consensus. There has to be a compromise to move forward. I know it's an unpopular concept. I know it's very unpopular, but that's what happens. In Hegelian terms, in Hegel's terms, these, the dialectic is going to, you're going to come into conflict, but from the conflict and the discussion, you can create a synthesis and move forward. These are imperfect. Human beings are imperfect. Ideas are imperfect. Everything's imperfect. We live in samsara. That's what the Buddhists tell us. We live in samsara, and this is all illusion. This is all confusion. So remember that. And remember that the opposite side of you is just as confused, just as flawed a human being as you are, who is just as convinced as you are that they're in the right. And we have to get down from that and see each other as human beings and move forward. So that, that, and that's how, if, that's how successful businesses work. Successful businesses don't shirk from conflict. They they say, okay, why do we have a conflict with our customer? Why do we have a conflict with our vendor? Why do we have a conflict with our production line? Why is our production line fighting us? Why, why, are, why are we not getting the output of our production line we should have? And there's, a lot of times there's an emotional need in a human being. There's an emotional need to say, I, I, I'm, it's that person right there, that person right there. If we get rid of that one person, man, my life's just going to be so much better. That, that is a... It's an extremely flawed way of thinking. The majority of the time in business and in life, it's counterintuitive. It's probably not the human being that's at fault. Sometimes it is. I understand that. There are evil human beings. But a lot of times, it's the process that we've created, the robots that we've created, that, are, that we've created in a flawed method, and now people's behavior is responding to our flawed method. Now, that's not to say, like I said, there, there are evil human beings. I understand that. And that's a separate topic. That's psychopathy, and, we're, and we can talk about that another time. We're talking more general terms of business. And in the Dakota Access Pipeline, there, there is a compromise there. There's a compromise. There's a win-win for everyone there if we're willing to look for it. So I'd recommend the concept from the Toyota production system, from the fundamental wisdom of the middle way, and... Uh, I'll read just one thing from the book. This is on page 204 of J.L. Garfield's book on Nagarjuna's commentary on the fundamental wisdom of the middle way. This is Tibetan Buddhism. I'm, uh, full disclosure, uh, I'm a Christian, although I did study a great deal with Tibetan uh, 
uh, geishis or professors. So I'm very familiar with their ideas and you can learn a lot from them in business. Page 204. Nagarjuna emphasizes, quote, if another person causes suffering, who is that other one? Who bestowed that suffering, distinct from suffering? When self-cause is not established, how could suffering be caused by another? Whoever caused the suffering of another must have caused his own suffering. That's the key right there. Right there. Whoever caused the suffering of another must have caused his own suffering. That's everything right there in that sentence from Nagarjuna. If you're causing the suffering of others, you're causing your own suffering. This is from terrorism to eco-terrorism that's happening in the Appalachian Mountains to conflict between individuals. If you cause the suffering of another, you're ultimately causing your own suffering. If you cause the suffering of another business because you think that's the right way to make your business better, you ultimately will cause your own business to suffer. I mean, this is basic karma. This is as you sow, so shall you reap. And fun, we're finding out in business sciences that this way of thinking that Nargajuna is talking about is actually the more correct scientific way of thinking. Let me read that one more time. When self-cause is not established, how, how could suffering be caused by another? Whoever caused the suffering of another must have caused his own suffering. So if you cause others to suffer or you're suffering, you may be causing other people to suffer. So you have to say, again, you have to look within, find your own flaws, correct them, self-correct, and move forward. That's, that's, all, that's the only power we all have at the end of the day. You know, any, anybody, uh, no, anybody who's been a recovering alcoholic or addict or a person who has a problem, you ultimately know the people who have been able to overcome their problems, to a man, these people will tell you, it was they had a spiritual encounter of some type, and they had to realize it was them. They have to change. And this is on both sides. Now, I understand the Lakota are saying, hey, we're being victimized. They're rolling through our land. And I agree. I mean, the water cannons have to stop immediately. Concussion grenades, rubber bullets, violence towards these people from the government and the, and the Dakota Access Pipeline has to cease immediately. I mean, this is a disaster for your business to, because social media is going to, to wipe you out. I mean, literally, you, your business, the businesses are suffering from this. And we just read, who's causing, your, who's causing your suffering, Dakota Access Pipeline? You are. Stop it. It's simple. Get a dialogue and sit down and talk to these people. And at the end of the day, the compromise may, you may have to reroute. It, it may have to happen. And if it happens, it happens. I mean, you know, it's, get, the investors will have, to just, will have to invest more to go a different route. So that's why I want to bring up. So, so the takeaway from this long-winded diatribe is the fundamental wisdom of the middle way, the Tibetan saint Nagarjuna Shantideva, the concept of the Toyota production system, that finding flaws is not wrong, that finding a flaw within yourself, within your business, within the conflict you find yourself in, by finding the flaw, that's a precious jewel that it really is, is a precious jewel that you can now correct and make better. Just like cancer, it's better discover it early, eradicate it so the whole body doesn't suffer. This has been Bob Brown, and thank you for watching my video.